Farmers have got little control over grain prices, but do have control over inputs. Using our machine will reduce planting time, giving the farmer more options and a superior tool to react to climate conditions. I'm a capitalist, and I'm sure you guys are too. There's not many farmers in Australia, or around the world for that matter, that are not capitalists. When you sell your grain, you sell at market price, and you've got virtually no control. One of the ways you can increase your profit is to reduce your inputs. If you're a one-man band, a one-man operation, it's difficult to get labour. If you've got five or six or seven thousand acres, you could probably spray in the morning and plant with our machine in the afternoon and still get over the country during the optimum window. If you've got a big operation, it means less machines, less planting rigs, less labour which is probably difficult to get anyway. Also, with a one-man operation, you're going to register less engine hours on your tractor and get a better price when you eventually sell it, or it lasts longer. Less investment in capital equipment. If you're a more substantial operation, let's say you've got 15,000 acres to plant, you can do it pretty comfortably with a 40-foot machine, probably in the region of 300 horsepower tractor. If you've got a time machine, you'll really struggle to plant that amount and you're going to be getting outside the optimum planting window. You probably need a bigger tractor, a wider machine, more capital investment and probably still go outside the planting window. Don't forget, every time you've got a planting rig, you've got an air seeder, you've got the ground engaging and you've got the tractor. And don't forget the labour, all expensive stuff. What we're talking about here is reducing the inputs, keeping down the cost. And with those inputs in labour and fuel, as you'll hear many farmers talk about, the savings are up front. You make this saving at the time of planting, regardless of how well the crop eventually does. It is money in your pocket today. Fuel consumption was, um, what did we work out per hectare? It was... Uh, it used to be four litres a hectare. Um, yeah. And you brought it down to... Down to two and a half litres a hectare now. It certainly dropped fuel consumption. And I think I could probably get it a bit better as well. I think I was revving the tractor a bit hard early, just with a new machine I was... But I think this year I'll go up a gear and back the reds back. And probably do better speed this year as well. With a new machine, top speed was probably 16 k's. Whereas next year, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll push it a bit more. Just that with the new machine, I was yeah, backed off a little bit. Yes, it was certainly on the sump spraying side of things. We had certainly a lot less uh, on that, which was a yeah, big saving, as I say, with the chemical costs that there are now. We you know, certainly don't want to let too many weeds soak down. In areas with low numbers, we were able to leave that and, uh, and still not have problems with lock-ups through with straw and with the melons that were, were there in the summer weeds. In a range of conditions and soil types, um, the machine seems to have performed exceptionally well here at the Avon Wayne Mudders at East Arano and uh, yeah, I think uh, particularly with fuel prices increasing like they have in recent times it's a good idea to you know try and conserve that and reduce your overall gross margin as well as uh, potentially towing a wider machine with less horsepower. You only need half the horsepower that the Tiny air that it needs, so you're saving 50% in fuel. And that's a big thing because of the fuel prices today. In summary, a possibly a saving of 30% in fuel and the speed and the emergence of the uh, seedlings on all the soil types. Yeah, so uh, big savings right through. We're finding using the bullet, we're, we're saving a lot of a lot of uh, production cost by in one in fuel. We've cut back horsepower and with a, with a machine. We're, we're using less horsepower, less fuel, less man hours, less hours on a machine. So it's the the production costs are savings of 30 to 50 percent ahead. With the fuel consumption compared to other time machines, it's a uh, I think it'd definitely be better. I haven't worked out the cost directly, but I'd say they'd, they'd have to lose a fair bit less because the machines aren't working as hard, obviously, slicing the country instead of pulling a lot of dirt out. It's definitely been a benefit. Each machine puts more acres in, yeah. It all depends on how quick you want to put the crop in. Our main, 
Well, challenge, I guess, with that here, been a long way from major towns, is staffing issue. We've got good staff at the moment, but it's very hard to keep good staff for a long period of time. Oh, you know, using the tractor off enough, you fuel it off. Just from um, the acres that we've done with a tank full, it's just, it has to be 30% better than dragging a, a bar time machine. Because if you get it in and you make this harder, well then it's going to be harder on the time machine as well. So we've done a thousand acres with this with a thousand litres. There's no way we could do that with a time machine, unless we left it out of the ground. No, no, that's a, that's a big bonus, especially the way fuel's gone. 